Good evening, everybody. How are we doing? Drop a comment where you guys are tuning in from. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Look, it's been a it's been a crazy day, a blessed day. Continue to drop what cities, what states you guys are tuning in from. And uh, yes, this this call uh, was supposed to be at 10 p.m. Eastern. I know a bunch of you guys are calling me out in the chat box. Um, you know, 10 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays is just not going to work. My schedule is just too crazy. Um, you know, almost you know a Chairman 50 organization. You know, tons and tons of different calls and events. So what I'm going to do and what I've decided to do, and I spoke to Mr. Jason Brown about this, and I got his insight, is they might have already changed it, is these are going to be my official times moving forward, okay? And you're going to, guys going to have to adjust with me. Make sure you guys are pleased in my Pip Talk channel. But moving forward, and let's see if they already changed it. This is going to be, um, okay, they, they messed up. We're going to get this fixed. Uh, my my official sessions. Let me just show this flyer to you guys real quick. My official sessions are going to be uh, Saturday at twelve, Sunday, and then Tuesday. There's not going to be a Thursday session moving forward. I'm going to get. I'm going to drop actually the picture inside of the pip talk right now, so you guys have this. Okay, and I'll, and I'll come back at the end. Okay, these are going to be the official dates and the official times. Of my pip to of of these go live sessions, so let's actually we can actually airdrop one second. Let's actually throw this on the screen. Airdrop, boom. And these sessions, guys, on Saturdays at twelve. Uh, I'm gonna leave the banner on the English channel, but you guys will be able to. And everybody should see this, right? Can everybody see this? Drop a one real quick. Everybody can see this. Let me sign back into my go live on my other screen. Okay. These are going to be the official times. Okay. Moving forward. So there's no confusion. Thursdays are just not good for my schedule. And I thought I would be able to make it work because that's what entrepreneurs do. So these are going to be the official times. Please drop a one if you got it. And we're going to get this thing kicked off. Okay, we got hundreds of people on the call. In a position, okay, I didn't even get a chance to call it in a pip talk because right when we got off, literally market went crazy and you had price take off about 370 pips. Okay, so hopefully you guys saw it. I'll give you guys the schedule, my updated schedule at the end, okay? Don't worry. Okay, guys, continue to promote this session. So, we had taken this trade. Obviously, you can see price had retraced. Um, you know, if you look at where price retraced, it was this last down candle, fifty percent. This could have been another entry uh, right here. And you know, obviously, Ethereum is taking off now. If you were on that session, okay, if you were on that session, we had identified a target, and we had, had identified that on the daily time frame. You see how price. Okay, I'm just going to do a quick recap of last week's call. Came up, drop. Came up, drop. This was the three-day time frame. I learned this from Picasso. I've seen Picasso trade on the three-day time frame, and I'm always like, why? More data. And you see how price respected, you know, 19, 17, drop, same thing, and then drop. Okay. Now, as price started to move back, this was going to be a target for liquidity. And obviously, we've ran those targets, and we've already continued. So we'll, we'll take a look at where we could potentially go. But we are, I mean, are we at that? We're pretty much at, we're about to be at the all-time high here in about $40, okay? So Ethereum's looking good, okay? Uh, it's, been a, it's been a great day here for crypto. If you just go look at the main page of CoinMarket now. <laughs> It's been an amazing day. You got Bitcoin sitting above 60. BNB is up three, almost at 350. Okay. For the week, you know, we're, we're seeing red on a lot of these different cryptos. So that was the Ethereum move that we called out. Okay, make sure you guys are in my pip talk. Uh, I will be calling out trades in there when I, when I see stuff, uh, not only on crypto, but many different markets. Okay, so now kind of, 
you know, moving in the direction of where where could we go, it's it's one of those things. Okay, so let's kind of look at something real quick here. What am I doing? Now that the now, when we get a candle, okay, this is a really really key point. When we get a candle closure above two uh, two thousand and forty, uh, it's going to get exciting. Okay, it's going to get exciting. We need a candle closure above that all time high, and then we're going to be in price discovery. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna see opportunity now. If you're trading leveraged, okay, and let's just kind of write this here. I know we have a lot of people on this call for the first time. You have leveraged trading, and then you have non leveraged. And if you're on this call and you have not started going into your myswipecoin.im, we're actually going to do it here together to kick off this thing. Is you gotta have you gotta understand the difference of leveraged trading non-leveraged and then this needs to be your best friend okay my swipe coin dot i am okay my swipe coin dot i am you're gonna sign in and if you're brand new to i am academy uh this is very important because there's three different there's three different uh trade ideas you're going to be getting here okay so on the metatrader four ideas you're going to be getting trades for mr nick gomez okay xrp for BTC, you're going to have Mr. Picasso. You know, this trade is is up like 1,200 pips. You have the Ethereum trades sent out by Picasso or Nick. So you have the MetaTrader 4 ideas. These are leveraged trade ideas. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off for a second. Then you have the non-leveraged, okay, which is building that portfolio. Drop, drop a 7. If you're looking to build a crypto portfolio over the next 36 months, over the next 24 to 36 months in this bull run, you're looking to get educated and really take this seriously. See, this is not a game. Crypto changed my life, just like it did for Ivan Paycheck, like it did for Nick Gomez, because we didn't approach these markets like an amateur. We approach these markets with professional, long-term mentality, and we've stayed in the game. And you're going to have to do the same thing. You're going to have to tonight decide that you're going to stay in the game. Okay, we have hundreds of people on this call. Continue to promote. Continue to invite people on here. You're going to have to stay in the game. Trade crypto leverage, right? You're going to, you're going to be up in profit, and you're going to say, well, it'll just keep going. It'll it'll just keep going. How many people thought, you know, it was just going to keep going, you know, right here, and then boom, pushes back, and then you you get out the market here when you should have got out the market here. Okay, is this making sense? So you're going to have to commit to plugging in and to being consistent and giving this time. Okay, all the results are posted in Swipecoin. Shout out to Nick Gomez, absolutely crushing it with the XRP trades. And then you're going to have the scalper. Now, this is a tool that not enough people are using. Okay, and I'm sure it probably caught out these Ethereum buys. course it did <laughs> okay so you would go up here to the top left you would switch it to a line chart what we're looking for is we're looking for the word buy or the word sell but we're waiting for price to break structure and then to be above or below this 50 ema or this 50 line so you know this buy right here would have not been a, a trade because we were not uh the the yellow line was not above okay we need to wait for a break of structure so if you look at this last trade the second that this candle closed, you could have even been patient here for this candle because we fully broke structure on the close of this candle. But this would have been a trade idea right here off the scalper that you would be up right now, you know, almost a thousand pips. Okay. A thousand pips right there. Price went, you know, almost 2,000. So. Make sure you guys are plugging into myswipecoin.im, okay? We will look at Reef on this call. Tonight's call, we're just going to kind of go with the flow, uh, to be honest. Uh, Sunday is going to be a very, very important call. That will be one of my favorite sessions, favorite sessions that I need everybody to watch before they get on these sessions uh, because on Sunday, do you guys want to know what we're going to go over on Sunday real quick in the chat? Okay. I'm going to answer that. 
I'm gonna answer that question. Uh, Nyleaf or Nylef two one three, and then we're, I wanna I wanna know if you guys wanna know what we're gonna go over on Sunday, because Sunday's gonna be key. Okay, so when I'm looking at this this trade, okay, it calls out the buy. What's my take profit? Okay, I'm gonna show you. So just like I'm looking for structure, I'm looking for where price has been. So this would have been a, a TP right here based on price coming up here. You can see how price took out these highs, swept liquidity, and dropped. So I want to see this high get swept, which it has so far. And this is why I'm, I believe we're going to see a – we could see a slight retracement on Bitcoin. We're actually going to look at it on this call. So my TP would be based on structure. I am looking for, you know um, – I'm looking f to take profit where other people are trying to get in. Does this make sense? I'm looking to take profit where retail traders are looking to get in. Okay? Because where they're, you know, remember guys, banks are, are buying to then sell and selling to then buy. This is, this is a sell to buy move right here. This is a sell to buy move right here. And we're going to go talking about, we're going to look into some of those candles. Okay, so uh, I believe, you know, different educators teach a little bit differently, but I'm looking for at least a one to three to one to four risk to reward trade. So let's say I'm going to target, you know, um, this this high. Okay, you guys can see up here this high. It's going to be about 900 pip. Take stop loss. Now, this right here is on the 15 minute. Okay, and I'm going to switch this to a line chart. You would have your stop loss below this structure. Okay, this would be about a 200 pip stop loss. Okay, so you have to kind of mitigate and understand that you have spread, spread of your broker plus your stop loss. So this would be about a 250 pip stop loss. I would target, my first target will be 500 pips. Okay, so about 500 pips. And this is where I'm going to move my stop loss. So let's say the red line is my stop loss. As price pushes up, I'm going to take my stop loss from down here and I'm going to move it to break even. So if price were to come back, I have a risk-free trade. That makes sense? In traditional Forex, I never, ever, ever move my stop loss. Never. I, am, I know what I'm willing to risk. I know what I'm willing to earn. I never do it. In crypto... I'm more uh, keen or I'm more okay with doing that because the markets do move faster, okay? But in regular Forex, I do not ever move my stop loss. I know what I'm willing to win, know what I'm willing to lose. Um, okay, so yes, I'm looking for support, uh, but I'm also looking for structure. So my stop loss in this example, I would have had my stop loss down here. I would have gone to a five-minute time frame. So I personally want to have the best risk to reward possible so if that was the trade and i'm on the 15 minute and the scalper calls out the buy right here okay i can see and i can also confirm that this is going to go up because there's all this liquidity there's all this money just chilling you guys see this see all this money just hanging out right here all this all these sellers about trying to come into the market and then boom price takes them out so in that example my entry would have been close of this candle above the 50 MA. Could have targeted these wicks up here. Close of that candle. Should have action, I believe. Get an Iraq. A super wealth in the house. He did his due diligence and he shared it with the family. So we definitely gonna get it together. <laughs> Randy, like, thank you, my brother. 
Listen, Manny and Randy are the Splash Brothers in here when it comes to Cardano. So yeah, I get, I get, I tip my hat to them every time. They they've been repping Cardano for the last like three years. So I can take nothing away from Manny and Randy when they come in here talking about their projects. But yeah, shout out to Manny. Got to give Manny all the love. Look at Manny getting the love in the chat. I love it. I love it. All right, guys. So tomorrow definitely we'll go deeper in the rabbit hole and get you guys together with how to how to go ahead and acquire yourself some flow and how to set up your flow wallet and getting everything moving so you can definitely participate because i know i put it on the list and i was like we can't get it in the u.s yet right but we got that now so we good we're good so right now fam let me go ahead and get myself all set up real quickly i'm scared even overlap this bad boy right because <laughs> i got <laughs> i got my flow thing working on I mean, my flow but my uh my nba top shot working i'm like oh, do i want to mess with that <laughs> but yeah we should be all good, guys. So first things first, right? What exactly is DeFi, right? When we come on the coin gecko, you guys will see right here when you scroll down, it shows you some of the top projects in the DeFi space. You know, Uniswap, Ave, Terra, Synthetics, right? Chainlink at the top, right? So you get a good understanding of some of the projects in DeFi, but what exactly is DeFi, right? Well, DeFi is just, you know, a term that, you know, of a term for a variety of decentralized services that aim to replace our current centralized financial system. This is what's going to make sure that we can have an opportunity to allow people who have been discriminated upon, people who live in economies that just won't facilitate the right kind of adoption that allow them to participate in the global economic movement right now. So DeFi can solve so many issues with banking the unbanked and allowing people to come in and become their own bank, right? So there's so many things right now that DeFi brings to the table what I want to do today is just demystify a lot of it and make sure that you guys have a better understanding of what it is, what this is and how all of this works and how we can utilize it moving forward, right? So next thing here, let me bring that down. So the next thing for me is, right, decentralized finance, Bitcoin. We got to talk about Bitcoin before we go all deep into DeFi, right? So Bitcoin isn't controlled by any bank or any government. It's decentralized, one of the top decentralized projects in the market, right? It can't be, it can be sent to anyone at any time received you know by anybody who has a wallet sent into a wallet right bitcoin is decentralized money but when we get into the DeFi space bitcoin has been coded in a way where it won't facilitate that kind of uh that, that kind of adoption with DeFi, right so we need projects that can actually benefit us in the DeFi space because i want to make sure i'm getting this out the way because i know somebody in the chat may be like wait so what is is, 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 is bitcoin in DeFi? is bitcoin going to be able to help the DeFi space move forward it, do, it is a little different with the way DeFi is built. And I'm going to talk about the network, the main network that, that DeFi is built on. So you guys can get a better understanding because we all know right now it's pretty much Ethereum. But I want to give you guys a better understanding of why Bitcoin isn't a part of the DeFi movement. And Ethereum has such a, a, a hold on this DeFi space, right? Also, just to kind of double back for a second. For all of my new people that are here today, and like I said, you guys may have been the first time here, maybe second time here. Welcome again, right? Fridays are typically a little more advanced than all the other sessions that we do, right? I'm not really going into, you know, the security side of things and the breakdown and things like that. But always want to suggest that you guys go and check out the videos that I have down below in the favorite section, right? Just to bring this over for real quick so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So you notice here, right? We're talking, we're doing our thing. If you scroll down, you see recorded sessions, favorite sessions, right? This is where I need you guys to go. So you're going to click favorite sessions. And you see here, we got NFT 101, Mandatory Crypto Watch, right? If you're new, please start here, right? Live at five. And then we have the exchange walkthrough. I need all of my new people to start at the Mandatory Watch video and then work your way to the right and then down to this video here, right? Those are the first four videos I need you to watch. Mandatory Watch. If you're new, please start here, right? Live at five, Blockfolio Tutorial and the exchange walkthrough, right? This is going to help you guys get a better understanding of the content that I'm dropping and how you guys can keep up with, for, with you know, further future classes and being able to kind of, you know, see exactly where I'm going when I'm breaking down things when it comes to technicals, when I'm giving you guys certain terminologies, things will make way more sense, All right? The NFT class is a little more advanced, but it's just giving you a good glimpse of what the NFT space has to offer and how this thing is going to be massive in the future and how you can participate in it and create NFTs and thrive in this space as well. Because there's going to be so many avenues for crypto. I don't want to have you guys sit on the sideline missing out on anything just because you don't have a good enough understanding or a strong enough grasp of the terms that they're using. 
right? And just for anybody who's new, NFT just stands for non-fungible token. When you watch this video, I literally break all of that down about a, what a fungible token look like, looks like, what a non-fungible token looks like, whether it's digital, whether it's physical. So you have a really good understanding of how all of this works and how it can cont cont continually grow and consistently bring in value, right? A lot, a lot of C words right there. So <laughs> you want to make sure that you kind of watch all of these first four with the mandatory watch if you're new, right? Blockfolio, exchange. Then we'll check out the NFT stuff because after this video is done, I'm going to have, you know, DeFi up there. It'll be DeFi 101. So you guys will be able to come in and get those. But like I said, for my new people, check out the favorite section. It's definitely going to behoove you to do so. All right. Also, for my new people, we have moderators in our chat. If you see Miss Chrissy Pips or Miss Alana, a.k.a. Higher Vibration, you'll see the red A with the at symbol after it with your name. They're going to be answering questions for you guys inside of the chat. Right. Currently, right now, we have around 443 people in the chat as we speak. Right. So. At this moment, everybody's you know, typing really fast, going through things. I may not be able to come in and answer every question. Shout out to F. Minton, shout out to <laughs> Chantel, shout out to Willow and Miss Christy Pills. But I may not be able to come in and answer all of you guys' questions, you know, right away, just reading through the chat nonstop. But our moderators will do their best to make sure that they can help you guys. The only rules that I have here are be respectful to the moderators, right? They don't get paid to do this. They're here because they care about you guys. They want to make sure that you have an opportunity to win at a high rate like everybody else has. Also. There's no spamming in the chat, right? Like if people are asking things, we don't want to see you coming in layering your question 90 times to fill up the chat box, right? That's the quickest way to get blocked, right? And I don't like blocking people because I want everybody to have a voice. I want to make sure that you can get questions answered and be respectful of other people that are trying to get their questions answered, right? When you're just being disrespectful and spamming the box, you're pushing everybody's questions out of the way so we can't see them and you're making it more difficult for myself and the moderators. And it's just not necessary, right? We want to help everybody. So don't be that guy. Don't be that girl. Like, just, you know, be patient, right? Also, remember, on Go Live, there is a 45 to 60 second delay. That is a good amount of time where I can go on a full rant and forget some of that stuff I said like a minute ago. So be mindful of that when you guys are asking questions because sometimes it may take me a while to double back and see what you guys are saying because I'm saying it. By the time it gets to you, it's 60 seconds later. So I got to double back, reread it, and then answer those questions of things I've already covered, right? So it comes off a little repetitive sometimes when I'm doing classes, but it's really just so you guys can understand how things work on Go Live. So it's really important that you guys let the moderators do their thing. And they're a beast at what they do. They're phenomenal, all right? We got some of the best moderators in the world. Not just the city, but the world, Craig, all right? <laughs> so definitely want to make sure we give you guys as many opportunities to get your questions answered. Right. Not having anybody in here just typing, typing, typing. We want to make sure that the customer experience is bar none the best ever when you come to this class. Right. We got everything you need. And we, we know we got we got edutainment where we're cracking jokes. We're educating. We got the moderators. We got the value. We got everybody having a great time. So if you've never been here before, welcome. You're going to have a ball. Listen, get those message, messages out to the team. Get in your, those Telegram uh, groups. Let's get in those Facebook groups. Get in those WhatsApp groups. Let everybody know. Club Crypto is booming right now. We're about to get into the DeFi space. So definitely go ahead and drop those invites. Let everybody know. Hop on. Get this value. Get these nuggets. Right. Come get this work. All right. So just so you guys understand, backtracking again, DeFi is going to be huge. But we have to understand that Bitcoin's place right now isn't going to be in DeFi. All right. But before we go deeper into DeFi, I want to talk a little bit about centralized finance. Right. Like our traditional legacy system. Right. All the services that we currently have right now rely on a centralized authority, right? With banks, right? We're talking about loan, when you're going to get a loan, when you're looking to go do uh, real estate, things like that. Like everything we have now with our traditional legacy system is, is already centralized. It has a central point of failure, right? Which makes them very vulnerable to different things like robberies and hacks. And right here where it talks about, well, you know, prone to mismanagement, fraud and corruption, right? Because we know if there's a centralized entity, they can take all of that power and mismanagement, mismanage it instantly right we've seen it happen so many times with big business where they just you know people are coming in embezzling things and nobody's the wiser right the people in accounting aren't paying attention to stuff or they're the ones that are doing it so there's always these central points of failure within a company or within our traditional system that we have right now that's the importance of having something like decentralized finance or the DeFi space because this could absolutely bring an entirely new wave of how money is moved, how money is managed, and how systems are put in place to keep things honest and transparent, right? I don't want anybody coming in thinking, oh, well, it has to be great day one. This stuff is still very brand new, right? 
We got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of ways to go. But it's also important to be a first mover in a lot of ways, right? You want to make sure that you have an opportunity to come into this space and really build and grow, right, with the market as it's moving. Not everything's going to be a home run. We get that part. But just having a good understanding of what we're already dealing with and where we're going, it just shows the value of what DeFi brings when you think about the, the, the traditional system that we have right now, right? Prime example, right? We got something like the Fed that's just printing money like crazy. And there's nothing we can do about it, right? It's just they can print as much as they want. The government can ask for as much as they want. And the funny thing is when you actually do your research and you realize the Fed is not, it's not, it's, it's about as federal as Federal Express, right? Like there's, there's nothing federal about the Fed, right? They actually chose that name because it sounds official, right? The Fed is just ran by a bunch of families that own banks that actually give the government their money, right? So the country is actually begging families for money. It is the craziest thing in the world when you research it, but it's 100% legit. It's real. It happens. It's still happening. It's been happening. It's going to keep happening. So knowing that we have a centralized, you know, entity like the Fed that can print as much money as they want to, like literally just out of ether, they just push, push a button, boom, brand new money, right? So it's really important, guys, that you guys, you know, really be mindful of what we're dealing with right now when we, when we talk about these centralized entities, okay? Now, the other thing about DeFi is we have to have the proper kind of components for DeFi to work, right? The, de the decentralized infrastructure needs to be play, like played out and laid out in front of you so you can have a better understanding of how this really works, what all this is, and how we can actually utilize something like Ethereum and not Bitcoin when it comes to DeFi, right? So Ethereum is more of a do-it-yourself, right? Do-it-yourself platform with decentralized programs called DApps or DApps, right? Everybody calls it a different word, right? Basically just smart contracts at, at the end of the day, right? This allows you to basically put code in place that removes all of the potential corruption and mismanagement because this code, this smart contract will have certain protocols that have to be met, right? And once they're put into play, there's no, there's no going back to change it or altering something. It's immutable, right? So we trust that the code will continue to do what it's going to do without having any kind of weird mishaps or any kind of corruption put into it. And we have to make sure that, that code is being tested before it's been put into play. So like I said, Ethereum facilitates that with its smart contract blockchain and structure that of a stable coin could we use, right? Just about fees now, right? It's not has this like win. It was like, woo! Time to operate from abundance. We got to give it away, family. I was like, no, Kurt, no, we need else. We need all the stuff. I'm like, nope, got to give it all away. Got to give it all away. We operate from abundance, right? We dominate. We don't compete. How do we dominate? We dominate by giving more than anybody else could possibly give. That's how we dominate here, right? So listen, fam, 286,000 in the max supply. It's, it's only at, it's 225 in the world. This, this right here, when DeFi starts booming and those fees get solved, a project like this could go absolutely parabolic. This thing could easily be $10,000, right? $100,000 when we start seeing trillions of dollars land inside of DeFi. I don't want you guys on the wrong side of this missing it. All right? To pass the collection plate. <laughs> I'm going to get off my soapbox. I'm going to get off my soapbox. All right. I'm sorry, Miss Main Event. You got me on that one. That was a good one. I give you, I give you your credit for that. That was funny. But yeah, man. Like I said, guys, I just, I really do, I really do care about you guys' success. I know what it's like to be on the other side of that screen and you're typing in that chat. You amped up. You got that, you got that feeling in your chest like, whoo, I'm so glad I'm on here today. I've been in that seat watching educators do their thing. So when I'm talking to you guys, I'm talking to you guys from a place of experience and a place of love because I'm excited as you are because I know what you're going to do with it once you got it, right? I remember watching Christopher Terry every night when I first joined the company and I would be sitting here feeling like I had battery acid pumping through my, through my veins. I couldn't sleep. I would be so amped up waiting for the next, the next call we had on Go Lives, right? Or back in the day when it was just IMTV. But yeah, family, like I said, it's, this is a labor of love for me. I'm super honored to be on here breaking this stuff down for you guys. But yeah, DeFi, pay attention to this project. DeFi Pulse, big thanks, big thanks. Okay, so without, without any further ado, this is great. We like right on time too. I want to go ahead and do some technicals because you know it's, it's Friday, so I got to go deep into the, the technical world right now. So what are we looking at right now when it comes down to the technicals, right? Well, over here, right, we had... Price making some moves. It's bouncing back and forth. I kept saying, I need us to break above 
this 51k area right and then stay above and give us a little bit of structure it broke above came right back right so this is one of the areas where i kept saying we keep getting rejected from 50k this may be an issue moving forward why is that we had a pump back here this was the elon musk tweet back here right price hit 50k what happened or close to 50k we pull back right we finally touched it again we got close 49 or 48 pull back right we broke higher we hit around 49 again pull back we finally <laughs> broke it and we're pulling back down right for a nice retest of this zone we got a little bit of a deeper move than i expected wasn't really excited about that i still keep thinking in my mind that 41 is the is the next big play and i think people are like terrified of a 41 a 40,000 dollar or a 39,000 dollar btc I just keep looking at this zone thinking if we pull back down to these levels here, it would be a historical pullback. Bitcoin would have never dropped that far during a bull run. It's never happened, but it could. That area has got my attention right now, so I'm definitely keeping my eyes on it. But at the moment, let me go to this chart here. At the moment, the next big zone that I'm looking at, and let me make this a little bigger so you guys can see everything, everything, everything. So the next big area I'm looking at right now is this low point. To this high point here, and lo and behold, guess what zone we lined up? Yeah, guys, fifty percent six one eight zone. So now, how should this look moving forward? Right, I do not want to see price. I don't. I don't want to see price come back down into this area again for any more retests because we've already broken out, made a move above, right? Made a new high from these previous highs back here. We've broken and made a new high here. Now we're pulling back for a fifty percent six one eight. Based on how I know the algorithms like to move and we're in a trending market, this would be pretty much the last time I would like to see a 47K BTC and then have us run back to the upside, right? So what zones am I looking at in the immediate time to pay attention to? On the four hour, this area right here is really rubbing me the wrong way right now. And I'm going to box this up for you guys so you can see it for yourself. Right here. This zone. And I'm going to zoom in on that and you'll see what I mean right here. This area, right? This engulfing candle down, leaving this little drop base drop.